No one would have thought that one day, in the middle of the dry and rocky mountains of Iran, where even a plant could barely grow, a project worth more than 2,500 billion tomans would be launched. This project was so huge that in its first phase, more than 3,500 specialized personnel, from engineers and geologists to loader drivers and equipment managers, entered the field. To carry out this operation, more than 700 heavy equipment such as bulldozers, excavators, cranes, trucks, and even surveying drones entered the area. So far, nearly 1.5 million cubic meters of earth have been excavated and more than 500,000 tons of construction materials have been moved into the heart of the mountain. Water transfer, flood control, and soil erosion control systems have been designed in such a way that they can control more than 40 million cubic meters of water annually. In addition to all this, more than 9,000 people receive salaries indirectly from this project. But the strangest thing is this. This project started in an area where everyone said, impossible. Even foreign companies that visited this project refused to participate. But Iranian engineers did something that has now become a model for watershed management in the entire Middle East. And now you are asking yourself what watershed management means. To understand it, just follow me because we will definitely talk about it in the future. And even according to predictions, this project can bring more than 7 trillion tomans of net profit to our country in the next 10 years. Now you are asking again how this gigantic amount of money could have been obtained only from this dry mountain. To understand it, just subscribe to our channel and watch the video until the end. What does watershed management mean? And why should we do this? Well, watershed management means controlling and managing surface water in the mountains and plains before it is lost. To put it very simply, when it rains or even snows, it melts. If it is not managed, it all turns into floods, soil erosion, or the loss of natural resources. And even then, the existing water evaporates and goes into the air. But with watershed management, this water is stored, infiltrates the ground, and becomes a vital resource for farmers, people, and even nature. Iran, despite being a mountainous country, loses more than 70 billion cubic meters of surface water every year. This is really a huge thing. This means about 1,700 times the water of the Karaj Dam, and this is lost every year for free without being used. According to statistics, in the past four decades, more than 12 million hectares of agricultural land have dried up and been destroyed due to lack of water management. And this is causing huge losses to the country. This crisis is not just about agriculture. Villages are emptying, lands are cracking, and nature is dying. That's why watershed management has become a vital need. This project in the heart of the mountain was implemented for this purpose, preventing water from escaping, storing it, controlling floods, and providing moisture to the soil. The government and engineers realized that if they don't do something now, in the next 20 years, more than 50% of rural areas in Iran could become uninhabitable. Watershed management projects like this are going to breathe new life into the mountains. And this wasn't just a technical decision. It's a life-saving move for Iran's future. When engineers entered the heart of the mountain with a watershed project, the first thing that stood in their way was nature itself. Rocks that were millions of years old, dangerous slopes, and soil that even a shovel wouldn't sink into. But this was where the earth was talking, and they listened carefully. To begin the design, a team of 40 geologists, soil and water resources engineers, spent months just trying to figure out what the mountain wanted. 
more than 350 topographic and subsurface maps were drawn. About 1,200 soil samples were taken, and that was using state-of-the-art equipment brought to the area by helicopter. The final design called for the construction of 12 earth and rock dams in eight different valleys. Each dam had to be built in the exact spot where it would hold the water pressure, slow it down, and send it into the earth without harming nature. The design of these dams was so engineered that more than 8,000 hours of computer simulation were done for just one of them. And what makes it even more interesting is that local materials were used. Stones from the same mountain, soil from the same plain, were used in this project without the intervention of additional industrialization, which meant both cost savings and harmony with nature. Here, the mountains were no longer resisting, but were cooperating. To date, more than 420 billion tomans have been spent on the construction of this huge project in the heart of the mountains, a number that shocks many. But when we know the volume of work that has been done, then this number takes on its true meaning. Just to transport the materials, more than 15,000 tons of stone, sand, and gravel have been moved by heavy trucks. There is no flat land here. Everything is mountains and boulders, large rocks, and dangerous precipices. Engineers had to bring more than 1,200 pieces of heavy machinery into the project through difficult routes. Nearly 700 human resources worked directly and indirectly on this project, from excavation to design, from supervision to implementation. Each earth or stone dam that was built required months of study, mapping, and soil testing. Even for some points, temporary tunnels had to be dug so that the machinery could pass. Although the costs were high, it is predicted that this project will generate more than 1,200 billion tomans of indirect economic benefits for the region within the first three years. Apart from the money, it will also have other benefits, including flood prevention, increased exploitation of downstream lands, and water storage. This means that every towman spent will be returned many times over. Some projects are either completely traditional or completely modern, but this one, a strange and successful combination, a project that was implemented in the dry and high mountains near the city of Shazand in the central province, where they not only use modern technology, but also creatively drew on the local knowledge of the people of the region. For example, instead of using industrial concrete, they used a combination of local stones and traditional mortar to build retaining walls. This reduced costs and did not harm the environment. On the other hand, with survey drones, they obtained precise 3D data of the topography of the land which allowed them to determine the exact location of each dam or structure without even a centimeter of error. In this same project, more than 1,800 tons of local materials were used and the machines that were used were some of them designed specifically for these mountains. The combination of local experience and modern technology worked here. Both nature was preserved and the project was implemented with high speed and precision. This made this plan one of the most successful hybrid examples in the field of watershed management in Iran. Until a few years ago, this was just a dry, worn out mountain. No water, no greenery, not even hope. But now, everything has changed. Up there, where it only rained a few millimeters a year, now springs have reappeared there. In this project alone, in the provinces of South Khorasan, Sistan, and Baluchistan, Fars, Yazd, and even Kerman, more than 100,000 hectares of dry land have breathed again. Now look, every time it rained, it would disappear, but now it is gathering in one place. In many parts of Iran, the vegetation has increased by up to three times.
times. The population of local birds and animals is returning. The underground aquifers that were drying up are now repairing themselves. Some farmers have even started cultivating their lands again after many years, where once there was only cracked soil. Now, thanks to flood control dams and levees, it has become an active living system. Projects that once might not have been visible are now giving real life to the land. This is a miracle in action. This means that when science, need, and effort come together, mountains and deserts come alive. No project, even if it is scientific, engineered, and successful, is without enemies. On the way to implementing this large watershed management project, there were two types of serious enemies, natural enemies and human enemies. From the side of nature, they were faced with sandstorms, brutal droughts, sudden rains, and severe soil erosion. The mountains cracked under the pressure of landslides many times, and many structures were on the verge of collapse many times. Even in the summer of 1401, heavy rain caused one of the earthen dams to be completely destroyed. But there is no need to worry, because it was quickly rebuilt. But harder than nature was the war with the human enemy. Deliberate destruction of structures, illegal extraction of water from reservoirs, grazing and indiscriminate entry of livestock into the area, and even opposition from some locales who saw this project as a threat to their personal interests. Some thought the project was just interference in nature, unaware that this interference was exactly what was needed to save nature. However, the engineering team did not give up. They held awareness sessions, collaborated with local people, and made them fully aware of the project. All of this turned these animosity into opportunities, helping these projects grow. A shovel of dirt alone may not do much, but when millions of cubic meters of dirt are carefully and purposefully dumped onto the ground, miracles happen. In this massive project, the embankment was not just a construction operation, it was a real rescue for the dry, cracked, and dying land. More than three million cubic meters of dirt were moved, not to build a city or a road, but to restore the roots of the land. Soils that became resilient dams, flood control structures, restored vegetation beds, and even water infiltration pathways to the aquifers. With these same soils, steep valleys were tamed, torrential flows slowed and tamed, tree roots came to life again, and soil that used to be uprooted by a breeze now stands firm for future generations to enjoy. Saving the earth doesn't always involve fancy technology or space age gadgets. Sometimes it just takes a few excavators, a few dedicated engineers, and a whole lot of compassion. The earth, once a threat, is now the main factor in its own salvation. If someone passed by here a few years ago, they would only see a dry mountain, without green, without water, without hope. But now, this is one of the points of hope for Iran, a project that was carried out in the mountains of Kerman province, in different areas. But these were not just a watershed management plan, they were a new model of the future, a future that was built with water management, with indigenous science, and with love for the land. So far, more than 60 main structures, 12 large earthen dams, and 8 flood control dams have been built in the heart of nature. More than 10,000 hectares of dead land have come back to life. And this is just part of the work that can be repeated throughout Iran. Our Iran has always been thirsty, but now it will not remain thirsty because we learned to prevent any drought with soil and stone, with thought and technology, with heart and cooperation. This was not just a project, it was a beginning, a beginning for a future that we built ourselves. Thank you for sticking with me until the end of this video. Don't forget to support us the most by subscribing and liking this video. See you in the next video and another incredible project.